One excellent exhibit in the National Museum of the American Indian, my personal favorite, is Nation to Nation, Treaties Between the United States and American Indian Nations. The purpose of this exhibit is to confront the one-sided histories that a lot of us learned in school. For example, we learn all the frustrations the Europeans had with the Americans, but not the frustrations the Americans had with the Europeans. Just as I was nearing the end of the exhibit, I saw a label that I'm not sure if I had ever seen before, or if I had seen it, it left a fresh impression on me. The label was about the concept of civilization and how it's been weaponized against Indian nationhood. Specifically, the context of this label was the forced assimilation of native nations into an American way of living, but it reminded me of something I learned years ago in my own high school education. In a world history class, I learned that there are are eight components to look for when determining whether societies were full civilizations. They included infrastructure, trade, job specialization, that kind of thing. And among them, a system of writing. This was on every anthropologist's list I've ever seen. And sometimes they just say the quiet part out loud. No society in the Americas had writing, so none of them can technically be classified as a civilization, right? Because civilization is something we found in nature. No, all words are made up. We made up society and civilization, and we made up the difference between them. We talk about how every civilization has a system of writing. Well, every culture also has a unique hat, so why should writing be singled out? When I asked my students for different criteria ideas, one of my seventh graders suggested that every civilization, in order to be considered a full civilization, needed to have athletics. He was on to something. Think of all the reasons we play sports from team building to national competition and everything in between. If it's perfectly within our understanding of what makes a civilization in the same way that having an artistic tradition does. So what's so special about writing? It's precisely that it allows us to exclude Native Americans. Because they have sports and they have everything else on that list, which makes it all the more clear that that list was created to be exclusive. If you grew up with a similar definition as the one I did, you might be thinking, wait, so writing isn't important anymore? What else isn't important? Should we say that commerce isn't necessary? I guess public buildings don't need to be on that list. While I do think that this is an overreaction, I do get it. We're not just changing definitions. We're also changing the way we think about things, which can be difficult. But what if, rather than saying that any criterion of civilization doesn't matter anymore, we look at it another way? What if writing was one option of many? Say, for the sake of argument, that in order for a society to be a civilization, it should absolutely have job specialization, art, and a system of social organization, but it could have religion or philosophy, and four of the following. The sports, writing, architecture, public works, um, international commerce, and animal husbandry. Suddenly, a lot of societies that previously hadn't made that list can be appreciated by a more flexible definition, and we don't have to feel like we have to discount the pieces of our own civilization that we hold so dearly. The only real difference is that these pieces can't, in this new system of defining civilization, be weaponized to hurt others. It's at least an option. 